making condensers and water tanks. This is part three. Making the top caps using copper instead of the usual brass is more of a challenge, as copper is more difficult to machine. I made three condenser caps at the same time in the lathe. Normally the job would start like you're about to see. Three square pieces of brass, or in this case copper, marked out to find the centre. At this stage though I would normally place a condenser tank on the top of each of the pieces of copper, draw around the tank to get the shape I needed, and then cut off the corners on the bandsaw before putting the individual parts into the lathe chuck using an M6 bolt, but in this case I decided to do it in an entirely different way. Because these three copper squares were made using a guillotine, they are not all exactly the same. I clamped them tightly in the machine vise and held my hand against the sides to stop them moving, centre drilled them and then went through with an M6 drill. This next bit is really important, do not do this. I found this random M6 bolt in a box of bolts. I think it came from a piece of self-assembly furniture and it is not strong at all. I didn't realise this at the time and I tightened the nut onto it, put another one on to give some more support in the chuck and started the machining process. Before machining these pieces of copper I thought it would be a really good idea to draw around the top one so I knew how much metal to remove. The last thing I want is to remove too much metal and have the cap too small. The first thing to do is to put the part in the lathe chuck and tighten the jaws firmly onto the two nuts. And here, without destroying the allen head of the bolt, I'm centre drilling the end of the bolt to take a live centre. My fairly logical brain said don't drill the centre hole too deep because you won't be able to remove the bolt with an allen key. By using this live tailstock centre in the centre hole, everything is held rigidly. Without this, it would wobble about all over the place. Particularly when using copper, which is much more tenacious and more difficult to machine than brass. The job didn't really start well. I'm using a carbide tip tool, and in no time at all, I took too deep a cut, and it all went a bit wrong. The copper plates are only held by an M6 bolt. There's a reason for this. If I use a larger bolt, then the head of the bolt will mark the copper and I don't want that to happen because in the centre of these copper plates is going to be the drain tap for the condenser. This is what happens when you use an allen bolt that isn't strong enough for the job. Although really, if I'm honest, it's down to me taking too deep a cut and rushing the job. I tap the plates back into position using a soft hammer. I also thought this would tighten up the plates, which it did, until the bolt broke. The bolt was weak anyway, I should have known better. I selected a higher tensile bolt, one of those normal black Allen caphead ones. I spun two nuts onto the bolt, put them in the chuck, and then tightened everything up using an Allen key in the Allen caphead bolt. And then once again, I centre drilled it to take the live centre. I thought I would try a different lathe tool. This is a carbide tip lathe tool and I've just sharpened it and it's a very sharp pointy one. But unfortunately this tool was worse and grabbed the work very easily. I think the bolt needs to be even tighter so I tightened it using an allen key and started again back with the original carbide tip cutting tool. Any experienced machinists watching this video please don't bother commenting. I always make these videos with beginners in mind, so some of my explanations are simplistic and my methods vary relative to what I want to show. I like to show errors because I make plenty of them. Being able to use machine tools really is extremely useful, but I never wanted to make a career out of it. I'm quite happy being a musician and a recording engineer and a computer engineer and a Land Rover restorer. I do many things that just keep me interested. Boredom is a problem to me. I don't have ADHD. I've found a better term that fits my mental state. And it is simply OHD, Obsessive 
hyperactive disorder. My brain developed very quickly when I was a very small child, and by the time I was three, I was taken to the doctors because I was very hyperactive and given a drug called phenobarbitone. Once I recorded an album in my recording studio with a very well-known comedian called Freddie Starr, and Freddie was very hyperactive, and we got talking, and it turned out that he too was given phenobarbitone when he was a child for being hyperactive. I sort of guessed it because we did have things in common. We were both very hyperactive, even as adults. Sadly, Freddie is no longer with us, and he went to the asylum in the sky. As I was turning this copper, it was getting very raggy at the chuck end, so here I'm using a file to clean it off. I didn't want to leave this until the final cut. I thought the time had come to clean up the work as I was going along machining it. This job took a long time. The video footage that you're watching is running at around 400%. Now the square edges have disappeared, it's much easier to machine, and it's making a much better noise. You will notice in these clips I'm taking deeper cuts. Because it's a continuous cut, it's less likely to catch up and spin the pieces of metal out of sync with each other. Although, as you can see here, I did overdo it. As the job neared completion, I was starting to get excited in a non-exciting sort of way. It's been a good experience making three top caps at one time because it is actually easier. My trusty bandsaw didn't play any part in the making of these top caps. Finally, I'm using the file to clean up the edges. I've turned the part around in the chuck to machine the other side and as you can see, there are some marks on the copper but these will be on the inside of the tank. This is not the finished job. I need to drill the centres and thread them I'll show that in the next episode, but for the moment I'll just loosely assemble the parts so you can see what they're going to look like. The top caps are precisely the right size, that's a good thing. What I'm doing here at a high speed, once again 400%, is positioning everything roughly where it's going to be. Notice one of the tanks is bigger, that's for the 504 boiler. And that is it for this video, the job is progressing nicely. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.